bootcamp, parallels, or VMware. What's missing is Exchange. So we've decided to build Exchange support into Snow Leopard, into the main free communication applications, Mail, iCal, Address Book. It's really, really simple to set up, thanks to auto discovery in the Exchange server. You just fill in your email address and your password, and that's it. You are set up in all free apps. So what I'd like now is to ask Craig to come back and demo our section. All right. Well, let's see just how easy it is to take your Mac from home and hook it up to Exchange inside your company. So to start, I'm going to open up Mail. And you'll see I have my personal Mail accounts already set up, Mobile Me and Yahoo Mail. But now I want to connect to Exchange. So I'm going to go to Add Account. And Mail is actually already default in my address for my address book, for my Exchange address. I'm going to type in my Exchange password. And just like that, Mail has auto-discovered my company's Exchange servers. I click Create, and I'm integrated with Exchange. I have all my Exchange emails, just like that. I have my Exchange folders already set up. I have my Exchange to-dos and my Exchange notes immediately. But I also have access to all the Mac OS X technologies in Mail, even on my Exchange email. So Spotlight, for instance, I want to do a search for a sales presentation, instantly searching the Exchange data. And you notice there's an attachment here. It's a Microsoft Office PowerPoint. I get Quick Look to preview that live within Mail, whether or not I have Microsoft Office installed. And you know, <laughs> I, I have data detectors here, so they spot uh, an address, a contact, and I can put them in my address book. I can even, with one click, map a location. So all those technologies integrated in with my Exchange email. But you know, the applications also work together in just the way most natural for the Exchange workflow. So for instance, if I have a meeting invitation here, it shows up in my uh, mail inbox. And I can accept it with one click right inside of mail. Or if I want to see that invitation in iCal, I can just open it right up there and see it in context and accept it with one click in iCal. And now that I'm in iCal, you'll see that I have an integrated view of both my exchange calendars and my personal calendars. Now, this integration ex extends also to address book. So in address book, I have an integrated view of my contacts, both my exchange contacts and my personal contacts. I can search the exchange global address list, and I even get my exchange contact folders. And here's a cool one. If I want to set up a meeting with people in a particular exchange contact folder, like this product team, all I do is drag that contact folder out of address book into iCal, pick a time slot, and I've just scheduled a meeting. Okay, and finally, the, one of the most requested features for integration between iCal and Exchange is the ability to schedule those meetings, taking advantage of availability information for people and rooms. And Snow Leopard delivers. So if I go into this location field and type uh, building, for instance, you see it's searching the address or uh, searching the global address list, it finds me the briefing room. And when I look for available meeting times, I click here. I see the conflict that exists for this invitation, but that's not a problem because I just ask iCal to find me the next available time, and it reschedules the meeting for me, just like that. So I hope you can see that when you move your Mac from uh, home to the office, we've delivered ex uh, Exchange integration just the way a Mac user would expect. Thank you very much. Thanks, Craig. So, Exchange support requires the latest server from Microsoft, Microsoft Exchange Server 2007. And with Exchange support built in Snow Leopard, it's somewhat ironic that we have it at no extra charge, while Windows PC typically require an extra product to get Exchange support. So, that's. That's Exchange, and this is kind of a little tour of the various areas of focus in Snow Leopard. Lots of refinements, powerful new technologies 
for all of us to innovate and exchange support to fit perfectly in businesses. So that's Snow Leopard. And Snow Leopard will be available for all Intel Macintoshes, past and present. So how should we price Snow Leopard? We've priced Leopard at $129. And we want all Leopard users to upgrade to Snow Leopard because Snow Leopard is a better Leopard. And so we are pricing Snow Leopard at the incredible price of $29 for Leopard users. And if you have several machines, up to five, you can use a family pack at $49. Snow Leopard will be available this September. And today, we are making available a near final version of Snow Leopard, a developer preview so that you can make sure that your application runs great on top of Snow Leopard. So that concludes the update on the OS and in fact on the Mac. Now I'd like to turn to Scott for the iPhone. All right, let's talk about the iPhone. It has been an incredible year for the iPhone. It was less than a year ago that we released iPhone OS 2.0, and with it, the native SDK. Now, this allowed developers to go beyond web development and build truly native apps. The response has been staggering. Developers have downloaded the free SDK more than a million times. And these developers have been prolific in building apps and posting them to the App Store. There are now more than 50,000 apps on the App Store. <laughs> now, we've been working really hard, too, to build a huge and growing user base to run your apps. Apps from the App Store run on all iPhones and iPod Touches. And we have already sold more than 40 million iPhones plus iPod Touches. Now these customers, they love downloading and running apps from the App Store. In fact, on April 23rd, we crossed one billion apps downloaded from the App Store. That's in just nine months. And I'd like to say thank you. <laughs> thank you to our customers. And especially, thank you to the developers who've been working so hard to build these great apps for all of our customers. You know, we've heard some amazing stories from our developers. And we put a little video together to share some of these stories. Let's go ahead and roll that now. Never in my wildest dreams did I think that I could just travel the world while making games. After Dizzy View was launched, we could finally make that happen. For us, that's really what it's all about, creating great experiences for the fans. Man, if, if I could see the fetal heart tracing on a mobile device, there's not a, a doc in the world that wouldn't want to be able to do that. When I was a practicing physician, I had a direct impact on patients' lives. Now, through our application, our sphere of influence has dramatically grown. 
when the SDK was released, we said, yes, it's possible now to create.